I just bought a new camera for adjusting claims. Learn the features that will help you in the field as an adjuster and the best setting for claims for this camera, starting now. You're watching the Property IA Show. This video is sponsored by Kaplik. As insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by insurance. Get the free guide at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And by the IA firm, CCMS and Associates. To apply to this fast growing and innovative firm, email your resume and cover letter to careers at ccmsclaims.com. Hey, Matt here with Adjuster TV. For the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. It's one of the biggest things that you can do to help Adjuster TV. Okay, check it out. In the early days, we used Polaroid cameras and even 35 millimeter SLR cameras with film. In order to close our claims, we had to get on a first name basis with the photo finishing person at the drugstore. I mean, can you imagine? These days, you can take stunning, high quality photos with your phone. In the year 2000, did you even think that that would be possible? As far as claims go, yes, you can use your phone to take photos, but I'm going to advise against it for a handful of reasons. One, getting images out of your phone can require that you either plug it in, which represents a cable that can be lost, you lose that cable and you're high and dry until you can find another one. And two, sometimes PCs and iPhones and Androids don't always play well together. And even if you use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi to get your images off your phone, connectivity issues can create bottlenecks in your workflow and slow you down. I mean, how many times have you had to run the wireless connectivity troubleshooter thing on your PC just to get on the Wi-Fi at your in-laws? And three, I don't like having my cell phone out of my pocket when I'm up on a roof. It's too easy to drop stuff when you need all your hands just to keep yourself up there. Four, it runs the batteries down faster. Five, some phones don't like getting overheated and will either dim the screen or just shut off until you let the phone cool down. Not cool when you're out running 68 claims a day in Texas heat. And finally, number six, if you drop or damage your phone, you're out of commission in more ways than one until you can get a new one. This is the thing that you make calls on, you check email on, you get claim updates on, and it's gonna be 500 or $1,000 instead of 130, like this little camera. I love technology and I really like following what the latest thing is, but just because something is new, doesn't mean that it's automatically gonna be better or more appropriate for what we do. I say this all the time, but when I'm assessing a new piece of tech for claims or comparing two different pieces of technology against each other, I'm always looking at it from three main criteria. Is it gonna make me better? Is it gonna make me faster? And is it gonna reduce opportunities for failure? All of these three things must be a yes for me to consider using some new piece of technology. And that's why I still use a snapshot camera. Listen, after we stopped turning in paper files and using physical images, like photos, we had really one option for taking digital photos, and that was the Sony Mavica FD88 with memory stick. Remember these things? Very quickly, however, new options started popping up all over the place. Smaller, lighter cameras came out that fit in a pocket easily, but they still weren't very durable. I've used probably every major brand of digital snapshot camera over the years, but nothing I've used has been better than this little guy, the Fujifilm XP series of cameras. What do I like about them? Several things. And two of those things aren't even very obvious. First, it's shockproof up to six feet. Obviously, any roof is gonna be more than six feet, but you can drop your camera anywhere on a clam, in the driveway, somebody's living room, et cetera. And many times if you drop it off a roof, it's gonna land in the gutter or in the yard. Secondly, it's waterproof up to 82 feet. I mean, what if you drop your camera in some dewy wet grass or it rolls into the insured's swimming pool or in a gutter full of stagnant water or even in a flooded basement? Anything can happen. I'd rather drop this in the water than this. Thirdly, and this is one of the not so obvious reasons, there are no moving parts in this camera. I can't tell you how many little snapshot cameras I've destroyed while running claims, all because I got some chalk in the zoom mechanism or it fell out of my pocket when I was getting out of my truck and cracked the zoom thing or the little shutter. Even if you don't ever get this XP140, avoid getting a camera that has a physical zoom or that extends out of the body. Even the cameras that don't have a mechanical zoom feature but have a little tiny door that covers and protects the lens that opens and shuts when you turn it on and off, that's even worse sometimes. It'll jam and it'll break and it'll keep the camera from turning on or off. So no moving parts in my gear, please. And finally, the other not so obvious reason is that this camera has a wide field of view. Plenty of other cameras have this feature, but it's a big one. I don't have to stand on the other side of the street in order to get my risk photo or an elevation or a roof 
slope overview photo. I can get more in the image in one shot. And this particular camera has a battery that lasts all day. And if you don't use the flash, it'll last multiple days. Just keep its little charger in the car and plug it in there every day or two. Coming up next, we're gonna take a look at the physical features of this thing, how we put the SD card in there, where the battery is, what all the buttons are for. But first, did you know that as insurance adjusters, we need to be covered by insurance? We're writing estimates, climbing ladders, walking on roofs, and mistakes can happen. What are you gonna do when something goes wrong? Just kaplick it. CPLIC, or Kaplick for short, is an insurance company for independent adjusters formed by independent adjusters. They understand our job and the potential problems that can arise on claims. If you want help understanding what coverages you need, head on over to cplic.net slash adjuster TV for a free download that will explain the common types of insurance for adjusters. Okay, let's take a look at this thing. In the box from Costco, it came with a little case, a battery, a charger, a 64 gig SD card, which is huge, a wrist strap, and of course, the camera. The battery is rechargeable, and like I said, can go for days without being charged as long as you're not using the flash a lot. And if you're running exterior claims of really any kind, you don't need the flash with this camera. For interior claims, that's a different story, but always be sure to experiment with the flash because sometimes water stains will show up better if you don't use the flash. And on a large water loss, if you use the flash on every photo, you will run out of battery inside of a day easily. On the front of the camera is the lens and flash. On the bottom is a tripod or other mounting hole and what looks like a microphone for the video recording feature. Looking at the camera from the front, on the left side is the main door to get at the SD card, battery, micro HDMI port, and micro USB port for charging and getting files off of the camera, which we're never gonna use, but more on that later. To open this door, press the button and turn the knob here. I would say of all the features on this camera, I'm not really in love with this way of locking the door. To charge the camera, you just plug it in with this little USB guy. Because this camera doesn't come with an external battery charger, there really isn't any reason for the battery to ever come out of this camera. The SD card, on the other hand, will be coming in and out of here all the time. Press in until it clicks, and there you go. Again, from the perspective of the front of the camera, on the right, there is nothing. On the top, you have your shutter, power button, and video recording button. Be sure not to hit that when you're trying to take photos or you'll end up with a bunch of videos and that's not really what we're after. Just a quick pro tip, the shutter button here is kind of an escape button. If you get too deep into the menus, you can half press the shutter and it will bring you back to the shooting screen. Okay, on the back here is your main display, your zoom controls, W means wide angle and T means telephoto, which is the same thing as zooming in. This little play button here will let you instantly review the photos you just took and to look through all of the files and images on this card. And you can show insurance pictures of the roof with this. The menu buttons are on this little circular dial. It doesn't spin, but you just tap the side that you want. You can access these items quickly when you're taking photos. Delete, function, flash, and shot delay timer. The bottom two buttons are for display items. You'll most often use the play button and the flash button back here when you're handling claims. Next, we're gonna set this camera up for running claims. But first, are you looking for an IA firm where you're not just another number? Let me tell you about our friends at CCMS and Associates. CCMS has been called a big mom and pops firm because they care about their adjusters and they also care about results. The CCMS family is dedicated to training and developing a talented adjusting team. If you would like to become a part of the family, email your resume and cover letter directly to careers at CCMSclaims Com. Okay, turn on the camera right up here on top. Sometimes it will show you a black screen with a message telling you to be sure that the door is fully closed. Just half press the shutter to clear that message. When you turn on the camera for the very first time ever, it will take you through the initial setup screens. Once you've got this thing set up, when you're in shooting mode, hit the menu OK button and navigate to the shooting mode menu option. There are a ton of different shooting modes and picture profiles, but to keep things simple, we're gonna use CALS mode, CALS mode, whatever that means. This creates a sub 500K image, which is pretty small for images, so that we can really pack this card full of pictures. This is plenty of resolution for property and auto claims photos and will make your overall claim file size about half of what the regular lower resolution mode will do, which means half the time for upload. If you need your images to be a higher resolution, then set this to SR and go down here to image size and select something like S, 
4 by 3. This will create the proper almost square image for uploading with your file. Do not use the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This is not for claims. The AF slash MF setting is for focus. That's autofocus slash manual focus. Turn on the AF illuminator since you'll sometimes need to focus in pitch black attics or crawl spaces. This will help the camera focus in those conditions. For release type, mine's set to when pressing. After this, you want your white balance to be on auto, your flash mode to be suppressed, and your IS mode or image stabilization to be set to shooting only. You can turn on the intelligent digital zoom, which will allow you to get a bit closer to faraway things. The quality degrades the more you zoom in, but sometimes you need to get a photo of missing shingles mm -hmm. on an inaccessible back slope. From there, I'm gonna go down to sound setup and turn off sounds for the menus and pick a shutter sound for taking pics. I always have the shutter sound on so that I have an audible confirmation that the camera took the shot. Finally, down here you can set the auto power off, connection setting, and format the card. Let's quickly talk about format. This is for erasing the SD card. Only do this if you know you aren't ever gonna need those photos again. It's permanent. You can also grab something like this Flash Air Wi-Fi SD card and bring your photos into your computer wirelessly. Where might this be useful? Well, if you've got somebody in the car helping you out, you can send the photos to them to import and label while you're scoping. Then when you get done with your scope, one of the most time consuming parts of claims is done for you, right? Even if you don't write up the rest of the claim on site, you at least have your photos in there. And if your assistant knows anything about claims, they can also let you know if you missed any photos. Could be pretty helpful. I hope this helped you if you were on the fence about buying this camera or if you were having trouble getting your camera settings correct, or if you were trying to decide whether to use your phone or buy a separate point and shoot camera like this. And speaking of, if you're doing photo assist claims, you probably have to use your phone to take photos and videos. The software apps used for most virtual claims handling generally will require it. And because you're only using an app to collect and upload data like photos, adding a point and shoot camera to your workflow probably won't make sense. If you wanna watch an extended version of this video where you'll learn what the required photos for property claims are, what order you should be taking your photos and what order they should be in your file, proper framing for claims photos, that is how to frame up a subject like a roof slope, an elevation or a fence, or a contents item, how to get photos from a camera into Xactimate, how to quickly label photos, how to reorder photos, and even how to export a photo report and attach it to an email, then head on over to Adjust Your TV Plus and grab your free trial right now. So what is Adjust Your TV Plus? Myself, Chris Stanley from IAPATH, Guy Grant from Veteran Adjusting School, and others show you how to handle claims with confidence. We know it's hard to find a working adjuster who will let you shadow them, which is why we let you ride along with us on Adjuster TV Plus. Check it out for seven days absolutely free at adjustertvplus.com. Adjuster TV is the premier video resource for the independent adjusting community, and we are committed to bringing you the best, most up-to-date, and entertaining programming to help you learn what adjusting is all about, if it's right for you, and how to build a rewarding career in claims. A career where you can help people in their time of crisis and earn a great living. For much more information about becoming a successful property or auto claims IA, including many more videos, free tutorials, trainings, and webinars, the best gear and software for claims, and industry news and IA weather reports, head on over to adjustertv.com. And like this video. Even if you don't like this video, hit the like button. It's clinically proven to give you a six pack. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.